So I was asleep when NVIDIA announced their RTX 3070 and 3080 Ti's. These would have been announced in Taiwan for Computex live in person, not virtual, but the virtual keynotes are just lackluster in my opinion. And to be honest, I wasn't really super excited about any of these cards to begin with. And what's the point of launching something very few can buy when these are supposed to be accessible cards? But in case you missed things as well, we're gonna run through these two new SKUs. We're gonna talk about price points and dive into NVIDIA's hash rate limiter a bit, which I think may, may, with a big asterisk there, may play a role in availability later on. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. So Engadget has a pretty great article summarizing the specifications and expected performance levels of both 3070 and 3080 Ti's. And look, just so we're clear, I know the senior vice president, whoever this guy is, is pronouncing the T part like, well, like this. The GeForce RTX 3080 Ti is our new flagship gaming GPU. Yeah, no, I refuse to call it that. It sounds stupid. Honestly, NVIDIA has been pronouncing it themselves very differently between keynotes and between presenters as well. But anyway, we'll start with the 3070 Ti. Uh, it sports an additional 256 CUDA cores over the vanilla 3070, which isn't likely to change much in the way of performance. And boost clocks have been bumped up a bit. Memory bandwidth jumps thanks to the inclusion of GDDR6X instead of plain old six. But we're stuck with the same eight gig buffer. Asking price is $599. That places a dead center between the 3070 and 3080, but we know these numbers are far from mid-2021. Expect to see these being sold by third-party retailers and eBay scalpers for well over $1,000, and I mean well over that. Considering MSRP, however, it honestly looks like the vanilla 3070 is the better buy, at least on paper, seeing as though the CUDA core count disparity and the clock speed disparity really isn't all that huge. And don't get too hung up on the memory bandwidth thing, right? For gamers, it won't change much of anything. 448 gigabytes per second, that was never a bottleneck to begin with. So yeah, that's it. I don't wanna say it's a marketing gimmick, but at this point, it, you're just paying for faster memory that you don't really need in games. Now, the real kicker with this announcement was the RTX 3080 Ti. Many expected this card to come in at around a thousand US dollars, that's MSRP again, but good old Nvidia decided to slap us with a cold and crisp $1,200 ask. And look, to some, the card may still be worth this, arbitrage aside, but in a stable market where mass GP mining doesn't exist, neither of these cards, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, looks particularly enticing. The 3080 Ti, for all intents and purposes, is a 3090 with stripped down memory. Only 12 gigs of GDDR6X instead of 24. That's a huge freaking disparity. Heck, it was already a huge disparity with the plain old 3080. And that led many to believe that NVIDIA would either release a you know Ti or Super SKU with a, a much larger frame buffer in between. Well, now that we have a couple Ti SKUs announced, it's pretty clear that NVIDIA isn't prioritizing it in the more attainable SKUs. I mean, sure, this is blazing fast memory we're talking about, but only having 10 or 12 gigs of it in cards of these calibers is like throwing training wheels on rockets. Let them freaking breathe, right? Give us 16 gigs like AMD's been doing. Content creators especially will thank you. But that aside, here's how the 3080 Ti and 3090 are alike. Identical TDPs, ballpark core clocks, ballpark memory bandwidth. This is very similar to how Nvidia's done it in the past with its 80 series Ti SKUs, save the obvious jump in price to over $1,000 which I suppose to be fair, started with the 2080 Ti. I mean, Turing was kind of a kick in the teeth when it came to value, but with Ampere initially looking like a return to form for Team Green, pre-mining craze, pre-COVID, pre-everything, something reminiscent of, of like Pascal or, or Maxwell launches, it's definitely disappointing to see them continue this kind of trend, especially in the higher end SKUs. What's more, we don't expect supply to be all that great either. So the what few cards you can buy from e-retailers, they'll be scooped up very quickly. And then what's left will be on e eBay, right, where scalpers and, and miners dumping cards are going to be asking two or three times what they should on paper, and people will still buy them. And as we discussed in previous videos, scalpers will undoubtedly get their hands on these en masse as well via distributors. They're going to go straight to the distributors and they're going to say, hey, I'll pay you full ask plus some on top if you sell me the whole pallet. And then they're going to sell the pallets, you know, either in chunks or going to sell them individually on eBay, or they can mark them up two to three times. I know it's easy to blame flippers. I don't, I, I hate, I should say, how they're getting around the supply chain. Uh, but on the other side of the aisle, I mean, you've got fools that are throwing cash at these things, at these cards on eBay and the like. What, I mean, can you blame them? It's not illegal, right? And as long as you have a buyer on the other side willing to pay whatever price you're asking, I mean, it's, it's, 
in that sense, a fair exchange. We can hate it all we want from the outside, but until the manufacturers do something, until the distributors do something uh, to prevent this from happening, uh, you know, on the pallet level, where, where, where scalpers are buying hundreds of these at a time and then doing whatever they want with them, until we fix that further up the supply chain, these scalpers are just gonna do what they can do. And as for the miners, and this one's tough, uh, I don't know too many folks buying 3090s for mining, which is essentially what this skew is here, uh, but but it just, it hasn't stopped scalpers from taking advantage of them to begin with. So I don't see why it would change here with the introduction of another SKU. And to that end, the 3070 Ti is much closer to the mining sweet spot, which I'm sure will be affected by this uh, to, to an even greater extent. That said, what NVIDIA is doing with the Ethereum hash rate limiter, and they're launching these specifically with these limiters in place, Look, it could have an impact if it proves too difficult to crack, which I freaking doubt, okay? But it's the only hope we have in the immediate. It should also be noted that there are other proof of work algorithms out there. Like the one that NVIDIA is targeting here is, is, is the one that's preferred for a lot of Ethereum miners. But if I'm not mistaken, Ethereum mining switching to proof of stake, I don't know much about this because I don't mind. Uh, but if it switches to proof of stake, this entire thing that NVIDIA is doing here is futile anyway, which is why I think it's more or less a publicity stunt. Um, and, and again, there are other currencies out there as well. So barring any huge drop in the mining market across the board, um, I don't think this is really going to dent a miner's confidence at all. There, there are far too many possibilities to consider at this point, sure, but I'm betting on the hash rate limiter itself not making much of a difference, and, and it hasn't as of yet, give it some time and someone somewhere will crack it and the floodgates will again open. They're already open. I don't even think they're closed. This is like taking a piece of paper and trying to hold back an entire reservoir of water. It's not gonna happen. Um, it's, it's, it's like NVIDIA knows that these will eventually be cracked uh, should cryptocurrency prices remain enticing. They're just trying to, to milk it for all it's worth to try to restore that hope, that consumer confidence that they've been missing for so long. So be sure to let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about either of these cards, if you would entertain either of them at MSRP, which is a totally hypothetical situation at this point. Obviously, I don't think many people at all are gonna get these anywhere near MSRP, except maybe very initially when you have that first little batch from e-retailers and, and brick and mortars and whatnot, but uh, it's gonna dry up very quickly. I think that the 3080 Ti in particular is an obvious cash grab by Team Green. I think they priced it uh, lower, but they didn't need to because demand is so high and supply is so low and they don't really, they don't really like disclosing supply a lot, and I really hate that. Um, I'm just really upset to see another skew here reek of Turing from a pricing perspective. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Leave a like, and um, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.